Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode five of the Calm Mind podcast. My name is Berkey Patobi, and joining me, as always, is the wonderful True Green Seven. Hello, mate. Hello. <laughs> we got a little bit of admin before we get started. Just to say to those of you who are our, our listeners uh, for week five and hopefully beyond, thank you so much for the incredible reception to the opening of the podcast. We launched the first three episodes now uh, a fortnight ago for you, and episode four came out last week, and we're, we're going to be getting these out pretty consistently every week. Uh, of course, if you want to listen to them first, you want to listen to them here on YouTube, uh, as getting them out on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts just takes a little bit longer, um, but the plan is to have them all there all the time and the previous four episodes all will be too what's a fortnight two weeks but we released it a week oh okay for us right now it's a week week. did you think i was talking about fortnight no i know i know what a fortnight is but for some reason i thought it was two weeks but it was it isn't two weeks ago when we released it but it is two weeks when you guys are listening so, As okay. the people who are listening. I'm trying Got to it. get in the mindset of those <laughs> listening. How's things going on your end, Ron? How's things going? I'm good. I just tweeted out a tweet. That's the only thing you can do with a tweet. I, that you, can, <laughs> <laughs> you tweeted it out. It has I been tweeted, twet. <laughs> Um, uh, About how I'm attracted to voices. I mean, specifically female voices. But like, like I, if I, I can just not even see a, a woman and just be attracted to her voice solely. Like, like romantically? Like, I can have a crush on her, even if Bro. I haven't seen her. That's, that's amazing. So, hang on, but, the, like, what if you then saw them and you were like, ah, I'm not really attracted to, to them. That, would def- that definitely happens, but the point is that it's like, I can have the same exact feeling of, like, the same feeling you have with a normal crush by just listening to the person. That's it could amazing. Be like a voice actress or a friend or, like... It could be the voice of an actress that I do know the face of, but for some reason, just the voice is more appealing to me. I don't know. That's so interesting. I've never... I don't think I have that sort of attraction by voice. If anything, I have it for... for, If if anything, I have it for guys. And for, like, people Mm. with gravelly voices. And it's not so much an attraction, more that just there are... There are some men that I think have really... Uh, magnetic voices, like if it's gravelly or particularly deep, yeah, or I'm trying, cool. to, I'm trying to think of uh, particular actors that suit that. But like there are where I'm just like, oh, I could listen to this all day. But I w- it wouldn't describe it like a crush or an attraction. But that's the thing. So like mostly, whenever people talk about attractive voices, they almost always talk about men, uh, whether they're uh, li- like sexually attracted to them or just a, the voice is very entertaining. Um, so that's why it was just. A, it was just interesting for me to realize over the course of the last like year or two that nah, that's a thing that I'm attracted to, um, and nobody talks about it. And obviously, whenever I tell it to people, like yeah, like uh, you know, Scarlett Johansson has a sultry voice, or like oh, uh, when a woman sings very well, that is attractive. But I'm not talking about. I'm definitely not talking about singing because honestly, Happy I don't know why. Happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> but, see, that's not attractive to me because that's like that's a performance. It's like. Yeah. I guess I'm attracted to a the a voice of a woman who's like very genuine sounding, just sounds like she's just normal, <laughs> just a normal sounding woman. I'm attracted to like the personality of a person's voice sometimes. The personality of a person's <laughs> voice, but I get what you mean. Just in the because I mean that's that's I mean a lot of how voice acting works is putting character work yeah. into an emotion to into voice. And when I think when I think someone's qu- got quite a a, a large range in their voice that can be appealing yeah. Yeah, you can create a whole character out of them right and well, and be attracted to that i guess when a, a girl can like can go high and low like she has this balance and her normal voice is like right in between that is very attractive to me and that's just and nobody talks about that so i i'm interested if anybody who's listening has the same <laughs> same problem <laughs> that I, have. I, I i love i love well it's not a problem it's just it's like because then you... i'll get I, so I can easily get you know have a crush on anybody now I, even if i don't see him now apparently <laughs> is this so is this just something you've realized this week or no, something you've been thinking about for a while or it's been probably two years that i'm thinking about it but it's like to the point where like nah this is a normal thing i need people to hear it <laughs> i need to see if other people have to other people have the same understand feeling. this well there um, you go if you're listening live please uh or not live if you're listening on demand or wherever um let us know do you have that uh, and how how are our voices doing? I mean, I obviously as a YouTuber get a lot of uh, comments on how people enjoy my voice, but that, I think that's just more the style of how I talk, not the little like the timbre or the pitch of my voice. 
because like I don't think there's anything special about the pitch of my voice. I think you have a very soothing voice. I think okay. you're, and, and maybe it's just the topics you cover in your YouTube videos, but I've always yeah. thought of your your voice carrying a lot of, calm down, I'm going to tell you the facts. There's a sort of soothing authority about it, I think. Well, uh, you, at least to Americans, they're going to definitely be attracted to the accent. Um, you also have a very friendly personality. Like, I listened, I, I showed the first episode of the podcast, literally the first only t- like 10 seconds to my best friend, and he's like, Wow, Toby has the perfect voice for this. Oh, um, thank you I'm, to your best friend. <laughs> and I'm sure so that kind. it's like every aspect of your voice, like the accent, the personality, the pitch, it's like very well balanced. And I think the girl version of whatever your voice is, I would actually probably be attracted to, honestly. Oh, just just say just say you're attracted to my voice. <laughs> yeah, I okay. would if I was. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> okay. You can... It would be a problem if I was attracted to your voice. I would fall in love with you after like a few episodes. Oh, I fall in love with you, and then we'd have this. This would be a totally different podcast, but it would, and everyone would just. We're only on episode five. The shipping will already begin. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. The people like our artwork. Um, the artwork yeah. that you did. People <laughs> seem to really like the whole the ocean dividing the two friends across the thing, and I think it's really magnificent. I think it's lovely. It's very romantic. Yeah, we would. I mean, we've talked about before, like the idea that, like, if we lived closer, I think we'd hang out. Yeah, a definitely. Lot. Like there all the time. Of, there are a lot of YouTubers that I'm realizing that's the problem. That's the fact. Like, because like I don't have a lot of friends near me. I mean, we'll actually talk about it um, in the last segment w- where we talk about our upbringing. Um, mm-hmm. But like right now, all of my friends don't live near me, so it's like I don't have friends <laughs> that I can uh, <laughs> hang out with unless I like plan it you know, a month or two or, or two before. But I'm sure that's a feeling that a lot of people in the cur- current and younger generation uh, feel. It is. I think the the advent of the internet being in everyone's lives gave us all the, oh, we can connect with other people who, are, who think the same way as us. And so there's that kind of, as soon as you leave school and college and start jumping online, it's like, cool, my college friends are cool. But my convention friends and my online mm-hmm. friends and my Discord buddies, they get me in a different way. And there's that kind of uh, everyone just sort of chooses their their community, I guess, and yeah. uh, wants to be part of that. And then that that's why I think conventions in particular are such a magical space for people getting to meet up who don't get to hang out like in the day to day because it's the one excuse that everyone has to come together to hang out, to spend time together. Um, I really miss that about conventions because now it's so work oriented um, mm. in terms of like, I still get to see people, but we're always seeing each other in the context of how you doing this weekend? Yeah, it's been an hour and I'm shattered. <laughs> like, um, you know, I'm working this bit, you're working that bit. Okay, we'll try and catch up later. And then you sort of, you, you'd never do. So I still haven't ever attended a con convention as a YouTuber or anything but a, just an attendee. Really? Um, yeah, I mean... I literally cannot think of one that's near me that I would have a panel at because like all the ones near me are big like I, I live in New York mm. City so like the Javits Center in Manhattan is like what that's where New York Comic Con is held and that's that's bigger than than San Diego Comic Con nowadays so it's like um, there's not going to be any major convention that I can attend because I'm just too relatively small I'm not like like a celebrity oh, like sure. a A-list celebrity that do actually attend these like New York Comic Con for example the thing is in the UK there's lots of there's lots of small ones so yeah, there's exactly. like and they've all got quirky names like there's there's one uh, that we have down here called Annie Manga Pop which I quite like going <laughs> to um, and it's just this real grassroots people who love anime down in the south of England who don't normally get cons they made a convention and because it's quite a small affair you know, they invite people like me down to be their kind of guests of honor or whatever, which is hugely flattering for me. And but I like it actually because, like, with the big London Comic Con that happens, it's a lot of people. It's a very commercial. It's very like business. Whereas I think with these grassroots conventions, it is that sort of same groups of friends meeting up in a more intimate setting and everyone's kind of getting a chance to see everything because it's not too big. And so I actually get to spend time chatting with people, even if they don't know me through the channel, who might be like Pokemon fans. They see Pokemon on my booth or whatever and they come and hang out and we have a chat. And so uh, I get to have more, I guess, real connections with people at conventions like that. 
that's exactly what I want, but I would n- personally not do it at least easily, probably because of my social anxiety. Like, it's just not a sure. thing that's appealing to me to have like a meetup because it's just, it's going to be, a, it's, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> I, like, I'm going to be, it's it, in a perfect world, I would be happy. It's, some, it's something like that I would love to do if I just was able to be more comfortable around people. But um, also, like, even a panel, like, I would have to go to the bathroom, like, during the panel because I'm going to be so nervous. We'll see. That's a good thing, though, to recognize that, to, like, have the self-recognition on that. Because I know, and I think with YouTube in particular, there's this thing of, like, you're supposed to want to be famous. You're supposed to want the to be a rock I, star. I do want to be famous. <laughs> it's just and, like, and that's fine. But, like, knowing where your boundaries are and not burning yourself out. Yeah. And, and it's something that maybe you build up to gradually. Maybe don't jump in on the deep end. Go to a convention, a small local convention, as a guest, and then uh, don't announce you're there. Maybe say on Discord the day before, hey, I'm going to be at this thing. Anyone yeah. in the New York area? Maybe you meet like three people, and you build up to it slowly over the course of several conventions. That would be yeah. my thinking. Yeah, I, before doing a actual panel or, or a huge meetup, it would be, I just at least attend a, co- a convention, be comfortable with the idea of uh, people coming up to me <laughs> to, yeah. without them knowing that I even was there so it's a nice surprise for them doing that maybe two three conventions and then have an actual official meetup and then look at the idea of having a panel maybe with other youtubers hopefully i mean there's no reason to have a panel just one pokemon youtuber or just yeah yeah yeah, youtuber below a million yeah i mean i've seen you in a a couple of panels like panels we do youtube panels yeah what was that like was the last time you did that like three four years ago no, no. I mean, the last time we I, we do panels every year at like really? Social in the City. Yeah, I love going on panels. Um, and I love I love watching videos of uh, panels, whether it be like YouTubers or voice actors. I'm a huge fan of that. I like when I got into anime like uh, a few years ago. That's what I was watching. After watching every anime, I would l- watch all the voice actor talk about uh, talk about their roles and you know their favorite mom- uh, moments in the show and stuff like that. But it's always a little like uncomfortable when you realize that the actor doesn't really know anything about the show or like you know just voiced a character didn't really uh <laughs> yeah sure wasn't isn't a fan of the show because they don't need to be they shouldn't <laughs> it's, it's, they're an actor they're just it's their job to just voice and you don't need to be an anime fan to voice in an anime or anything yeah. like that but um it's just uncomfortable when the when the viewers don't realize that and they're yeah. pushing them, asking questions that it's clear that the person doesn't really uh, there, care about or has knowledge about. There's that weird disconnect, I think, between the actor and the character where a lot of people don't realize that for an actor, it's it's a job. Yeah. And or like perhaps even to do the job well, the the idea of watching the final product back, especially given how much editing and changing and retakes that would have gone through, that that might be in any way uncomfortable for an actor or jarring for an actor or may even be put them off that doing the job. Like, I know, I think it came out recently that like Johnny Depp doesn't watch, didn't watch the, um, he hasn't seen the Pirates of the Caribbean really? films, right? And uh, my friend Dan was saying, that's so heartbreaking. I love the Pirates films. And I, you know, I, how, how is it that he's not seen the films? And it's like, yeah, but like, if that for him would make him so uncomfortable that he would then be in his head about doing the next one or the next one or whatever the case, probably better. But a lot of people, you go to a panel and you're just like, ah, it's Captain Jack Sparrow. It's not. <laughs> it's ju- it's an actor. <laughs> and he loves playing that role. And he like he's yeah. the protagonist. He clearly, if he doesn't want to watch the movies, there has to be a really good reason, like a genuine reason. So it's not like it's a... Uh, so if, uh, Elizabeth Olsen, she doesn't watch the recent Marvel movies because mm. she it makes her nervous about the performance of the movie um i mean it also could be that she just doesn't isn't a big comic book fan um or just a superhero movie fan which you Mm -hmm. know i mean a lot of people aren't so it just you don't have to be a marvel fan to be in a marvel movie especially if you're the perfect i mean marvel is known for their perfect casting and if the perfect casting is a person who doesn't really care about the movies it's still fine i was wondering if there's any like were you doing any q a's when you were doing panels yeah, uh, yeah, we tend to, I think the structure of a panel tends to be like, so we're doing a panel, let's say, on, uh, I don't know, making videos within a niche. That's a that's a classic panel I've ended True. up on a few times, right? Um, and it'll be me there, and there'll be like a Minecraft YouTuber, and there'll be like a beauty <laughs> YouTuber, or whatever, like a Marvel YouTuber. And so we'll all go down the line, and we'll answer the same kinds of questions, and give our thoughts. And then at the end, there tends to be like a Q&A section. It's 
pretty rare that I get like bird keeper Toby specific questions. Usually yeah. the questions are in line with the theme of the panel. And everybody but, um, answers. Yeah, yeah, and everyone takes a turn to answer. Recently, the the cool panel that we did recently, you wouldn't have seen. The, I don't think you would have seen this. this is me and Ace Trainer Liam did a, a panel with the current voice actress for Ash Ketchum, um, which was super cool. This was, uh, this was like late March. We were at a convention uh, in Birmingham, and for some reason the name is eluding me. But the voice actress for Ash Ketchum was there, and so we did a a Pokemon panel. And they said, you guys are going to ask the questions. So me and Liam, or 10 minutes before, went, oh, we're going to come up with some questions and ask her. And it's, I would be nervous because I don't, again, like Sarah Nedashani, she's definitely a fan of Pokemon, but again, she's not going to be like a fan, as much of a fan as we are, for example, of like the video yeah. games and stuff like that. So like, I would be constantly worried of like, not trying to sound like I'm imprinting my f- fan ship on her fanness like because like i'm what if i ask a question and it's like clear that she really doesn't care about that aspect of the franchise or something like that yeah um so that's why i'm nervous about those kind of things but like are there any questions that you were asked in the past that you think were not enjoyable to answer i guess nothing is springing to mind Mm. that's not to say there hasn't been (laughs) uh hopefully that means that they've all been good um i asked a question at a panel that i think you would be really interested in though because so this was a panel at the youtube space in london for the 30th anniversary of wicked on the west end are you familiar with wicked i'm familiar with wicked i haven't okay. seen it though yeah this, this is going somewhere i promise so um in wicked obviously all the characters are uh, for those who might not know it are from the wizard of oz and it's like a prequel to the wizard of oz featuring the origin story of the wicked witch of the west and i asked the guy who plays the wizard i was like hey do you like read the the Wizard of Oz and like read like I think there's a Disney spin-off Oz the Great and Powerful as a way of getting more information about your character? And he sort of I just remember this guy being so taken aback by that. Be like, well, no, of course not. I just read the script for for Wicked. But like yeah. you could sort of see him sort of think about it afterwards. And I was like, yeah, because. You're technically, and it's not like I'm going to go see Wicked after and then watch Wicked Wizard of Oz and be like, ugh, they've totally break, broken the canon. <laughs> like, it's not something I care about. But I do wonder about that kind of things where projects are segmented in that way. Like, for example, I don't know, with uh, Legend of Korra, if you're a character that's supposed to have been live during the time of, like, the last airbender is there scenes that you should have watched to like know how mm. to play this character or, or or no this is a new separate project it's funny know? that i definitely know like for example the characters that played like the younger characters like cora and her gang definitely probably watched avatar i mean i know that uh, janet varney the voice of cora is definitely a huge fan of last airbender but like the old the, the characters that our older versions of the older characters from Last Airbender, they, they probably didn't, because <laughs> they're probably, like, old people that don't care. Um, yeah. But, uh, I mean, like, what's cool is that, like, I love it when I see, like, older people enjoy the animated sh- series that they're a part of, or, for example, you know how they're ca- they're in the middle of making the live-action Avatar The Last Airbender? Yes. And everybody's pretty much already cast, and the voice, uh, the actor for Iroh, Paul Sun Hyung Lee, the he's the protagonist of Kim's Convenience. So it's like definitely a show that is beloved by a lot of people, especially like the Asian community. Um, uh, which is funny because uh, Simu Liu, the Chang Chi, he's he's in that show too. I think he's oh, the cool. son. Um, and for example, oh, the actor who's going to play Zuko, the live action Zuko, he was in Shang Chi too. <laughs> he was the the brother of uh, his friend of Aquafina's Aquafina's brother. <laughs> Right, okay, cool. cool I guess, cool. well, I mean, that kind of shows you how uh, there isn't much representation for uh, Asian uh, actors because they all have to like be part of the same like shows and, and movies. So I guess it's, again, this is mm-hmm. why people are really championing the casting of all these actors in the potential Avatar The Last Airbender series. I'm saying potential because we may have to renounce it if it sucks. That is the one thing I've heard, though. Like, I, I haven't looked too much into it, but I've heard that the casting is stacked. The I've casting, heard it's got the great casting. casting. The casting. The casting. I'm rubbing off on you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the casting is amazing. Honestly, one of the best like, adaptations I've seen visually. Um, all the adults are perfect. Dude, you know who's playing Ozai? Mm-hmm. Um, 
again, he's a very famous actor. He voiced the he voiced Asami's father in Korra. He voiced oh, cool. the general, the earthbending general in the that tried to make Aang go into the Avatar state. Um, very good voice actor. Very the one of the most handsomest men on men, men on earth. I think he's in Hawaii Five O. Or Lost? I think he's in Lost too. I don't know. I've never watched him in anything live action. What? Look him up. Oh, he's, if you mean... I think I know who you mean from Lost, because I think I've heard about this casting. And yeah, great, great actor. He literally looks like Ozai. He has the cheekbones of a god. It's like the craziest thing in the world. Um, I know who you mean. Same thing with... <laughs> I know those cheekbones. <laughs> <laughs> um, and same thing for Iroh. So it's like, they got the... Oh, same thing for Zhao. I'm not going to now list everybody, but like... Because you guys probably... If you don't watch Avatar, you, this is the most... Boring conversation ever. I I don't know if you noticed this, but and I never you never want to talk about your weaknesses in a podcast in terms of how, how you record a podcast. But for example, I have a nervous tick that I think is just it's like laughing. Like whenever I'm uncomfortable, I think like my line didn't land, or just I guess to fill up the the awkward silence, I will laugh. Interesting. I think I know what you mean now that you've. <laughs> said it and you sort of i think and maybe that's the just did it just there no th- I, well, I was conscious <laughs> that was, of it, so that was a, okay. actual laugh but um no for example when i finished saying my line i was gonna laugh and i had to force myself not but to now you're now you're being watched and listened to i know what you mean i've got do you know what i had the worst nervous tick for such a long time while doing youtube videos and you never saw it on camera because it was always cut out but mm. i had to squeeze my eyes shut and like clench and make a sort of Mm, sort of noise and I would just get really anxious filming and I would sort of just have to do that tick sort of like I don't know maybe maybe like half a dozen times before I could record the next line and that plagued me for about two years I don't know really how I got out of that and sometimes very rarely when I'm anxious or nervous I'll catch myself doing it and I'm like ooh look there you are still there still there <laughs> that tick it's the Toby curse it was the Toby tick that's it you had to. You transferred it to someone else. That's how you got it. Maybe, rid of it. maybe, maybe it went to you, and now it's a laugh. I but that's know. the that's the problem with like a podcast where it's like it's just the trail of thought. It's just literally my subconscious just unraveling onto the onto the mic. But it's good. It's been. I think our discussions and over the first four and now five episodes, like I think we've had really interesting discussions. And actually, it's I've been a particular favorite bit of mine is to do the Pokemon generation, uh, generating a Pokemon, and then sort of seeing how that conversation evolves. Yeah, it's always it's, been it's fun. Cool. It's such a good core trope, which was as you can tell, my clean way of segueing into that section <laughs> of the podcast right now. Okay, better than the last episode, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Let's generate it's that Pokemon. Time to generate a random Pokemon. Who's it oh. gonna be today? We're gonna have to make a jingle now. Oh, no. No. What? Who we got? And Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn. Okay, here's what's funny. So you know how this has nothing to do with the Pokemon itself. We'll talk about it soon because I actually really like the color scheme of Ferrothorn. I'm a huge fan of gray, black, and green together. So, for okay. example, Pangoro, I guess that's close to it. It's white instead of gray. Oh, no, it's gray, white, and green. Whatever, that kind of combination of colors. I am a huge fan, whether it be my clothes or, like, almost all of my clothes is that exact color scheme. Uh, so, yeah. But um, what I was going to say is that do you know some of the the Latin names for the, like, for elements, for example, like, iron is ferrum, or, like, uh, lead is plumbus, or... I, I wouldn't know them plumbum. off the top of my head, but, like, I now you've said iron is ferrous, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know that, but, like, I wouldn't know that. Dude, yeah, I had, problems. it was probably, like, I don't know, I, other than, okay, those are the only two I know, honestly, <laughs> but, like, they have been handy, like, they've come up, and I've impressed a lot of people just by knowing those specific two, like, elements because there's so many things that like you can talk about for example plumbum like you can be like oh lead the name for lead is plumbum and that's why plumbers are called plumbers because they used to use lead piping right and that is actually really cool i didn't know that i was like what like 15 when i was in like a on a dinner table with like a lot of my parents friends um and they were literally for like 10 minutes arguing about uh what the why plumbing is called plumbing right um like because they're also like immigrants so like they don't know 
like they're always like very annoyed by the inconsistencies of English and like why things are you know the etymology of different words and stuff like that it's like like literally every day my mom would be like hey why is this called this <laughs> like you know like that's that's how words work you know they're just because um but uh so they turned to me after 10 minutes because they're like Ron's smart and also is a native English speaker um, and I impressed them so much when I gave the answer like, which is crazy because like the whole time I'm like oh I hope they like ask me oh this is like like Wait, so Hagrid, you were sitting there with the answer, watching them for 15 minutes, going, oh, I hope they answer, ask me, what'd you say? Because, well, first, because it was funny just seeing adults when you're a kid, like, just be not as smart as you, or just not, or ignorant in a subject that you are knowledgeable, not knowledgeable about, because... Oh, that's a power trip. <laughs> especially because I think my dad was winning, so I didn't want to say anything. He was getting, like, the closest... <laughs> um, oh, oh no, no it was the opposite it was the opposite sorry my dad was losing that's why I didn't want to butt in and be like sorry you're wrong um, but then I had to in the end but uh, at least he was proud you know <laughs> when I gave the answer but it's annoying that like the person who was right was my least favorite of my dad's friends he's like my dad's rival almost because like he's like they're both like uh-huh. the most intelligent of the group okay. but the he has the complete opposite ideals of my father and I think it, I know the dynamic. I get that. I've definitely had friendships and know people that I don't want to like call out here that I can think on the top of my head. Um, I told you there'd be that hot YouTube drama back in episode one. But like, I, I there are definitely friends where I'm like, I like you because I think you're really smart and interesting, and you've got like, I think we're on the same, like we. It's like we end up at the same sort of conclusions almost but the how you got there it just annoys the heck out like i feel like you're you've got a completely different like life perspective or something that i just and it's just too so opposed to mine and i mean i'll and, straight up say it you know like, what i mean liam from the last episode is that honestly like i respect oh, him and love think? him but he has a completely different perspective on life than i do and neither of us are right because like we're both on the opposite ends of a spec of the spectrum and honestly like the best perspective would be a combination of the two uh he cares too little about people's perception of him and I care too much about people's perception of me and I guess a balance of the two would be good. Uh, anything to say about Ferrothorn? Oh, uh, I hate it. I'll just be <laughs> I'll be nice and honest. I, I That's not a favorite Pokemon of mine. It's uh, its not one I've ever used in a, a, pl- a playthrough and it's also all I know it as is like the stall wall that uses Mm. spikes and like toxic spikes and all the other things, Um, which is fine. But like, it's almost like it's defining character trait is to be a nuisance. So I don't think about (laughs) Ferrothorn much, but maybe I'm open to my mind being changed one day. I mean, there are a lot of Pokemon that are a nuisance and competitive, and I'm sure they don't, that doesn't affect your perception of them. I mean, unless you probably not. Were you affected by Ferrothorn in, like, a battle or something in the past? It would be cool. I would love more stuff like that in-game where, like, you know, strategies like stalling or even even stalling I would be fine with. Oh, as yeah. long as there are strategies inside the uh, AI of the game. Um, but- no, I can't say I, I, I've ever been, like, personally affected by a Ferrothorn. It's just, like, I get it. that's just, like, it's almost like that's my only perception of Ferrothorn. Like, I've not really given it that much thought as a Pokemon. You know, it's just... Steel grass wall thing. I don't think about it much. It's probably the like the only reason I love it so much. I, mean, I don't love it so much. Never mind. The only reason I have no, I don't have a negative opinion of it is probably the color scheme. Um, honestly, yeah. If it was a completely different color scheme, it would probably be below average for me. And it definitely, I agree that it's not. It's far from what I want from a Pokemon. I'm not a fan of Pokemon with uh, without faces or at least without a full face. You know, a mouth at least. But I mean, it's an object mon. It's it's gonna be hit or, hit or miss, and it's like it's it reminds me of a durian. You know what a durian is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you ever encountered a durian? No, I don't think so. So I did. Uh, to anybody who doesn't know, a durian is one of is literally probably the stinkiest uh, uh, fruit in the world. You open it up, it smells like sewer sewage. Um, but people love it. I think. What, in Southeast Asia? I don't know which specific country it's from. Um, Probably multiple, but that area, definitely. Um, So, in Judaism, there is a holiday. I mean, everybody has this kind of holiday. It's the New Year's. (laughs) Um, So, the Jewish New Year's... uh, For the Jewish New Year's, there's a custom to eat a new fruit 
like a fruit that you haven't eaten either. I don't know if it's ever or that year, but definitely to usher in the year with some kind of new fruit or food, right? And I went to a Jewish school, so we would obviously celebrate these holidays in 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 uh, school or talk about it or do like uh, fundraisers or events for these uh, holidays. One of them was a fruit drive, like a fruit sale for like exotic fruits for this for the new year. And it was, oh. you only do it when you're in eighth grade. You go around to, you know, the community and sell fruits. <laughs> um, and uh, one of them was durian. Obviously, we didn't cut it open because we're selling the fruits. But one of them fell and opened up and smashed, you know, to pieces. And I think they're expensive. They were, they were probably like $15 uh, a, a durian, which is, Wait, I mean... what? Really? Yeah. So, although they're probably a little bit more expensive because it's like a school sale. Um, sure. But I'm sure, I think fifteen dollars. How much is a watermelon, for example? At least for where you live. I don't know. I've never bought a watermelon. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, definitely double a watermelon. That seems like a fair price of a durian because it's an exotic fruit. Whatever. It opened up. It smelled. We also lost money because of that. A watermelon, by the way, is about three dollars. Um, I don't know, like three dollars. Okay, for yeah, me, for it's definitely watermelon. not three. It's probably like four. <laughs> do, 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 durians are they spiky? I've got yeah, they're spiky. This, it's they're not spiky, fun to hold. right? Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I love the idea of you guys as kids like lobbing durians at each other. <laughs> oh my like, god, like, I wish. <laughs> yeah. Um, but okay, so hang on. Your New Year's, you do try a new fruit, but you must run out of fruits. Say it again? What? You, what? For, you said for Jewish oh, New Year. Oh, run out of fruits eventually in terms of. You're going to run out of new fruits. Like a hundred fruits, dude. Um, I think it's. But I think it is like a new fruit, like a fruit that you haven't tried in the last year. Because you're right, you would run out, I guess. Yeah. Um, like dragon fruit was popular in the sale. Like a dragon fruit. Have you ever had dragon fruit? I know. You, do you know what a dragon fruit is? No. It has really. like it has like those. Um, it looks pretty. It's one of the prettiest fruits I've ever seen. It's uh, pink and green, dude. With it looks like a like a soft. It, it, layered mango. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking it up, and it looks like it actually looks like it has ice cream inside. Yeah, and when you open it up, but it, it looks, looks like, like it. Like what? Cookies and cream, I guess, inside? Yeah, inside? yeah that's exactly it. Um, my personal favorite was the star fruit in the sale. Have you ever opened up no. a star fruit? <laughs> look, star look, fruit. look, just assume that if it's a fruit or a vegetable, I haven't touched it in a while. The I British. Eat Pringles and only Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm a big fan of fruit. Good source of fiber, and I need it. But, um, f- fruit. I suppose the star fruit, it's, um, it doesn't look like a star. But when you open it up, when you cut it in half, it's exactly a star. It's crazy. And it's it tastes like a watered-down soft apple. Imagine like a just a soft apple. Like yeah, a, that's good. It's very refreshing. It's like, it's like, imagine like a, imagine like you're an apple, but it's halfway to an apple juice, but it's not rotten. <laughs> um, that's what it tastes like, I guess. <laughs> So I want to know where does the um the tradition of like eating a new fruit what's that about slash where did that kind of come from? It's the new year, uh huh. So new things, <laughs> new but fruit specifically. Fruits I guess. are always you know fruitful. You want the year to be fruitful. Yeah. To you, it's a it's a, a fruit is always a positive imagery in any True. culture. But again, this is not like the main tradition. This is just like a. A, a tradition like, that you don't, yeah, you don't yeah. even really have to not many families do it but it's enough to get some money from it <laughs> to scam some Jews <laughs> but uh yeah it's it, I'm, there are a lot of other traditions in, in, the, in, in the new year like dipping apples in honey to have a sweet new year what's funny about Jews is that a lot of the traditions you do it all at once in a meal <laughs> for okay in, in, for the holidays for example for the for the New Year's, you'll have a meal and you'll go through. You'll have like a pl- like a, a dinner table of various foods that all represent something for the holiday. For example, wow. the New Year, you'll have a bunch of things that represent just all the things good things that you want in the year. <laughs> like, oh, you you um, you'll have this onion that you'll cut up, and you'll cut up this onion onion, and this is as if you're cutting up your enemies or whatever. <laughs> 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 And this is the onion that represents the people we will crush and destroy. Exactly. Cut, 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 cut. Okay. It's so metal. And then you'll have a pomegranate, for example, um, that has, you know, countless seeds. So I guess either, I don't remember, what is, is it either that you'll have countless children or, or that your life will be as, like, your, oh, the fortune will be as 
countless as the pomegranate seeds. There, it's there's like a myth that there's like six hundred thirteen uh, seeds in a in a pomegranate, and there are six hundred thirteen uh, decrees in the in the in the in Jewish law that are like in in Judaism it's called a mitzvah, which is a good deed. For example, a good deed okay. in Judaism is a mitzvah. So, and there are six hundred thirteen, I guess, good deeds that you have to do. I mean, you don't have to; it's just that you should do. <laughs> and I guess there's there aren't six hundred thirteen seeds in a pomegranate. That would be amazing. <laughs> but you know, that's like that's like two different good deeds a day. If you're gonna get that all done in the year, that's like, that's and you true. only get a couple of days off from any good deeds. You got to do two good deeds a day. That's easy. What's an immediate good deed I can do like right now? Yeah, they, they all gonna be di- they've all got to be different ones, right? So that's you're gonna eventually get down like to the hard ones, like a challenge system. <laughs> with different combinations, oh, you're gonna get down to like a it's like, like, a, like a Jewish challenge side quest thing. <laughs> if you write them all out, and then you gotta like checklist them off as you go, and you'll you'll quickly discover what's the hardest good deed to do based on the the six hundred thirteen. The <laughs> hardest is like like in the final one, you meet God. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You battle God. Um, <laughs> honestly, that's exactly what Arceus felt. I enjoyed the. I enjoyed getting all the Pokemon in order to battle Arcus. That was one of the best things. It was the thing that we've always wanted in Pokemon, like an actual yep. achievement for completing the decks that yeah. is tangible. No, I feel that. I feel that. And, and the fact that it's not just like, cool, now you can battle it and catch it. It's like, oh, now you have to fight it. And it's the hardest battle in all Pokemon. Cool. Yeah, 100%. I, it was the only battle in the game that I didn't that I pressed continue. That I didn't mm. start from the beginning when I lost. Uh, no, I had to do that as well. I was insistent throughout the whole game. I'm just gonna, I'm never gonna hit that button. But actually, once I got there, I was like, ah, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and and catch it. Um, no, very rewarding battle, actually. Um, I want to talk about traditions, and I feel like this is, though is going to tie in a little bit with what we're going to be talking about. Um, so, yeah, we might as well segue we'll, into that eventually. We'll segue into it now. Well, okay. So I am not much one for traditions. Yeah. I actually very actively not dislike traditions. That's not the right word, but I like challenging them in a way that, like, we made everything up, right? Yeah. we, we All of it. We just made up. And I've got friends, <laughs> my best friend, will get very annoyed the idea that you could open Christmas presents like the day before Christmas yeah. or that for my birthday, it was like we were kind of celebrating the birthday the day before. And so I maybe have a birthday present that day to like open up. And like to, to him, it's like, what are you, you can't, it's not your birthday. And I'm like, yeah, but it, just, it doesn't matter. Like based on the rotation of the earth and the where we are, today, <laughs> none of it, none of this stuff matters <laughs> like at all. And I think as long as the vibe's right, you can sort of do whatever like tomorrow me and phoebe could just decide it's valentine's day and just do exactly what you'd do on a valentine's day and do that for each other we but don't then you definitely have your own tradition for example maybe breaking a tradition is your tradition or um, maybe that's it or like doing valentine's day on the 15th for example or like uh, i think every tradition that has ever existed has fade faded away and sure. every tradition has been broken and every tra- and there's always been a new tradition that that has, was formed and was there, there was some backlash to it that eventually that just became the tradition so it's like true maybe you true. Just started a tradition that will become a tradition that <laughs> maybe that that's the thing about it is that traditions by description are repetitive but actually in in actuality i think they're evolutionary i think we you're right i think we do choose to adjust them and there are people who are very like purist in their traditions and that things have to be a particular way for it to be either right or enjoyable and i'm very much of the opinion of no whatever feels right at the moment for the people involved is you know if you want to have your christmas on christmas day that's fine if you want to if you want to do your birthday (laughs) that's fine I probably will most of the time around as well, but I don't think it's like a big horrific thing to just sort of uh, like, it, it's no problem to me to just go, ah, let's all have our Halloween party the day before Halloween. Like, because why would it matter if it's, you know? Well, here's what's funny. So it's, this definitely has to do with our upbringing where 
to me, the word tradition is an, is actually a neutral term. Because for you, tradition seems like to, to the most extreme, it seems like the most conservative thing that can be done. While for me, in my upbringing, mm. it's actually a religious law is the most, uh, like, conservative thing while tradition is in the middle like tradition is way oh, below interesting that. Like, okay to me religion people were more scrutinizing reli- religion while okay. tradition was something that they were less they were more liberal about and they're like oh yeah this is our tradition and we may break it or everybody has their own tradition but no religious law that's what you have to keep interesting you're right you you've hit the nail on the head in the i think of tradition as being like like you say ultra conservative it's like exactly. the the upper echelon of you don't break this but actually you're saying no that's religious law yeah. and i think that's my thing is I've got a problem with authority. I've got a problem <laughs> with like, this is the way things are supposed to be. Well, now I'm just going to act up a little bit just because <laughs> I want to like prove that I can. But, it's not that I've even necessarily got a problem with the thing. It's just I want to do it different because I can. <laughs> and that's funny because I am. OK, so I am the opposite. I am very much. I appeal to authority a lot of times. Um, but let's say compared to like my friends i literally had a conversation with my friend yesterday about this because to him i sounded like i was being anti-tradition and anti what are you doing you rebel i was <laughs> like to him i was a rebel and i was i was making i wasn't making fun of a tradition but i was um questioning a tradition and this guy's you know a young guy like me and he was totally like he's not like offended by it or anything and he also he's all he's he's actually anti-authority but he's so he's more conservative than i am but by definition, so, like I guess nowadays conservatives are the anti-authority, like at least uh, societally, because now the authority is liberal, at least where I live, <laughs> which is in America. I don't think about that one. Definitely not where I live. Definitely like, not over here. Not the authorities <laughs> like the cops. The cops are conservative. But like, for example, the government right now is more liberal. So I see. The, so no, the, definitely so, not in the UK. <laughs> so the conserv exactly. So the conservatives in America right now are anti-authority because the government is liberal and they hate the liberals and the government, right? So it's like, so okay. for my example, my friend is more conservative. Uh, although in high school he was the most liberal person. Um, he's not like r- right wing, but he's 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 just more conservative than he used to be. So he's not liberal anymore, but he's okay, not like sure. far right or anything. <laughs> but like, tradition is the most relative thing in the world. While religious yeah. law, that's more absolute, I guess. And again, we'll talk about like let's let's talk about our upbringing so we understand the differences in our perspectives of sure everything. Yeah. Honestly. Well, I tell you what, because I think it all because you you have religious sort of upbringing, right? You've got and here's the thing: it's like. Again, relative to the uh, my other Jewish friends and family that I know, I am tra- I'm a traditional Jew, not a religious Jew. For example, right? Like I don't I don't believe in God. I'm agnostic. I don't, uh, and so it's like you know my dad, for example, and like and my you know all my siblings. Um, we'll talk about siblings. That's definitely part of upbringing. Yeah, but, sure. But like, so I'm a traditional Jew. While for you, traditional sounds like that's like conservative while traditional jews no that's like the most liberal kind of jew you can be (laughs) that's like we just do what we want based on our tradition and we don't really adhere to the religious laws unless it's just fun for us and it's just part of our tradition like you heretic like i celebrate all the jewish (laughs) holidays and to like a christian for example that sounds like that sounds religious celebrating every jewish holiday but i only do the traditions and the laws of those Mm. jewish holidays if it doesn't bring me pain <laughs> or, or or the opposite of joy you know sure that makes sense that makes sense no um, i think that makes sense i don't keep the sabbath as they say right. i don't do all the laws of shabbat so i i use electricity i okay i was gonna ask what i the... don't i mean i upload on saturday so it's like <laughs> um it's not none of my videos are ever scheduled they're always i manually on a uh, public make them public because uh-huh. i am scared that the scheduling uh algorithm of youtube will bug that day and it just won't be uploaded. For example, I don't eat uh, non-kosher meat. Not okay. because I'm scared of the ramifications or anything, but because I think the tradition is worthy of being upheld because I want my culture to exist after me. So, for example, I want to keep this tradition okay. so that it could it could uh, transfer onto my kids. And if I stop doing that, then there aren't going to be many traditions left to uh, keep... Th- the culture thriving in the next generation at least for me because i do care about the culture i don't care as much about the religion but the the judaism is probably the number one culture that is intertwined with the religion and ethnicity all together like the 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 boundaries are so blurred i remember being very confused when i was even actually up till just a few years ago about 
so hang on is is being jewish is that a ethnicity or is that a religion and there's i don't think it's made certainly in in growing up in school i don't think it was ever made super clear to me and i think you're the person i asked about that i think uh yeah it's an ethno religion so it's and that's simply because you know jews were very insular because of let's say oppression or just all the things that they've gone to they're like okay let me just stick with my own kind and because of that that slowly over thousands of years forms a specific ethnicity because you're just you're only having children with your your own kind i guess for thousands of years right and, yeah like what yeah, do you even think true. ethnicity is what is ethnicity it's the thing that we barely ever talk that about. is a really good question i don't that is i've never been asked that before and i don't know what answer i have for that my my gut reaction is to say that it is to do with maybe it is to do with you oh i don't know i yeah, don't know is the answer <laughs> it's just a social group that is tied to a common national uh, or cultural tradition basically but the, i mean <laughs> it's just uh and then here's a bunch of things that are actually quite complicated i think if you dig into them right <laughs> exactly um so even that doesn't mm. it doesn't cover everything um, but like for example, yeah. What, what do you think? What, what is your ethnicity? Or do you do you know? Or I mean, I ass- well, I mean, on forms I put white, British, or Caucasian. That but makes I sense. don't know. <laughs> I don't. That's what I. That's the box that I tick, and I assume is the categories I fall into. Um, but I don't know necessarily like what it means to me. I don't know that I have a sort of absolute definition of that. I've always described myself as very. In the same way that anti-tradition, also like anti... Um, Any label? <laughs> no, well, I mean, yes, but like also like I I don't vibe well with nationalism, if that's the right word. Like national pride. Like people who are like, <clears throat> uh, come on, England. I'm like, I don't care like, like i don't know how else to word it other to be than fair, that a lot of you british know? people agree with you i mean england is yeah. a way less nationalistic country than well the USA. I mean, not not to the people on the far right that's for sure no, that's but the like, far right you know that's the far right <laughs> but like I, I don't i don't vibe with that like for me this is just bit of space rock that i've been very fortunate to be born in this place in this time in this location and i'm incredibly grateful for the opportunities i get as a result of that i don't get major pride about being british or english or anything yeah. like that um and equally like i've got um i'm a, I'm a quarter greek greek cypriot and while i think that's really cool i don't think about it i'm not like oh well here's my you know ancient greek heritage like in anything more than a novelty kind of fun way i just don't connect really? with that part of my life in any particular way um although a lot of that would have to do with the fact that i wasn't brought up with many of those traditions my exactly. mom didn't even know my mom was adopted so she didn't know that she uh. was she didn't know she was greek cypriot until really years after i was born anyway yeah, that makes um sense. yeah so no i think that's kind of what that all means to me but i'm open to um to to growing in those areas though <laughs> i i don't see the use of it i like i like i said i was kind of to go full circle with what i was saying earlier the advent of the internet has sort of said these are your people this is your social group these are the people you connect with yeah. and so like my culture is more poker tuber than it is like <laughs> british do you know what I mean? if that makes I, any sort that, of sense <laughs> well you said th- that to you labels like these are about pride for example while t- hmm. again just based on my perspective it never has been about pride i mean yeah, obviously there is always some pride in when it comes to any label that mm-hmm. you're part of um but to me it was more just perspective like that's why i love just different kinds of people it's just they have an they offer a different kind of perspective like whether you like it or not you have you are part of some kind of group um and you offer mm. you offer insight to various different uh, topics and stuff based on your up your the life that you've lived and like whether it be literally yeah. you know i don't know things that actually matter like politics or like just talking about things in, on a podcast like I offered some kind of topic that was kind of entertaining, I hope, on this podcast, literally just because of my upbringing, and ho- that's like the minimum of how uh, of how good uh, some kind of perspective can be. The thing that this always reminds me of, and that I always think about, is, and I, I've had this little mantra for a while, which is, I don't, it's going to sound bad, I don't love my family because they're my family. 
I love my family because they're a good family. Yeah, definitely. Does that make sense? Like, I don't... Oh, bl- blood is thicker than water. Like, I, sure, okay, fine. But, like, I love my mum and dad because they're a good mum and dad because they've been incredibly supportive and because they've been... They've championed me throughout my entire life. Exactly. I don't love my brother because he's my brother. In fact, yeah. I suspect that if he wasn't my brother, we probably never would have met or even necessarily be friends. But I love him because he's been a good brother. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and, you know, and because, again, he has also championed me and been very supportive. And so I'm always going to be there for him as well. And um, I, I resonate with the idea of sort of picking your family. Um, you know, my best friend is my brother, you know, and like, I feel that. And that in some ways you are my brother, you know, on the other end of the other side of the world. I feel that, and that's kind of how I think about family. I don't give my parents necessarily. I don't think I give my parents special status because they are the people who kind of gave birth to me. I I give them well, mum, <laughs> not dad, as far as I know. But I give them that status because they've been fantastic parents. Yeah, and. I definitely as as an adult that should be your philosophy. As a kid, you can't be like you can't tell a kid, "Oh, uh, don't listen to your parents unless they're sure. you know, they give you candy yeah. or whatever." Um and that's why it's always uh uh it's always I guess controversial when talking about how you should view your parents because it's like sometimes you are the problem. I don't know, and obviously often most of the times you aren't the problem, but like um it's just for example, I just just like almost everything that I'm going to talk about you're going to, this is going to be a run, running theme of the podcast for hundreds of episodes but it's all about balance at least from my mm-hmm. perspective Exa- everything you said is correct but also on the other hand you should listen to your parents when you're a kid <laughs> I mean like it's like I mean I agree to to, to, like, to kind of bounce like reflect off this like when I was a kid I was when I when I became about 13 14 there was that stage of defiance where I was like you have to listen to me you have to hear my opinion because I am a person and you it's not fair that you get to just say something like we're doing this or you're not getting that or whatever without reasoning it out with me first and my parents perspective must have been for goodness sake you're 13 no shut up you're (laughs) gonna do exactly what we what we say and realistically now i could probably see myself in that situation and go yeah toby shut up (laughs) you know at the same time at the time it felt very you know as you're trying to become a person um it felt very insulting that toby wouldn't get to have a say in i don't know xyz whatever the thing was and i was definitely a bit uh, a bit of a troublemaker at that point for that i mean talk about your parents like what i really want to know what kind of person you're we don't know much about each other's parents at all do we yeah and that will reveal a lot honestly because again all these perspectives that we have been talking about the last hour sprung from our parents of course like of course well mum um mum is a very warm uh person she's a very kind of positive outlook she's uh, very anxious about a lot of things in life she doesn't want to upset anybody and uh i think she struggles with the more academic side of life uh this is to say that i don't know anything um anything in the world of no, not, not not that she's like stupid or anything by any merit, but she's she's a creative. She's an artist. She's and she is an artist. She literally makes art, but she's an artist and a creative. And artist, she's the, okay. the very much kind of was that was her it job? right right brain left brain? No, no, no. Mum, mum was a stay at home mum. Um, okay, she cool. she made a commitment when she was pregnant with my older brother to to be a stay at home mum while dad would go out and and earn the money, and in doing so was able to be there for me and my brother with our various learning difficulties and special needs. She was able to be there for us and be incredibly attentive when it came to school, whether if, whether it was a bully or a class we were struggling in. She fought for us tooth and nail. I Like, coming in, making sure we got enough attention and time from the teachers, making sure we were being heard and helped. And uh, I, I absolutely wouldn't be where I am without that kind of love and encouragement. And my dad is very much love and encouragement in the same way but 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 in a in a more analytical way in a more how can i literally help you how can i mm-hmm. g- give you like if i asked for a lift somewhere or if i needed to be driven somewhere in the early hours of the morning taxi dad is there you know and he's oh, yeah. he's always up to to help out and do that 
I mean, it seems uh, like my, the classic dynamic between, you know, husband and wife, quite, man and woman. Like, it is one's quite. emotionally there, one's physically there. Yeah, it was very much. Dad, I know, didn't feel that he took to being a dad very well at the beginning. And really? that's not that we weren't planned or anything like that, as far as I'm aware. We were both very much planned. Um, but I know that he struggled with with being a dad and that being obviously when you have kids being a very full-time thing um i think was was difficult for him um and as a result of that like he could snap at us when we were when we were young quite a lot and definitely there were there were tears shed and you know all all that kind of stuff that happens when you're young yeah um when your dad gets you know has he's kind of done wait a minute hearing you crying for like the 50th time and it's like you know um or whatever or whinging about um well i want this theo got this so i should get this (laughs) and and as a result i know he's felt a great deal of uh i guess guilt about that and i'm just like dad lashing out you're silly you're, you're, you're so silly there's nothing to feel bad about there's nothing to feel remotely guilty about you've been a fantastic dad because in every other element and you know since about the age of four he's encouraged me in also every single way possible and is a also not like he's not like a toxic masculine man okay. he is a very in touch with his emotions oh really though sometimes quite emotionally vacant but like not like in a I'm going to be a macho man. Just sometimes you have to prod him a bit. Dad, dad, you are right. What's going on? And you're, oh, well, actually, you know, but he's very, you know, fine like, with what's that his stuff. Person, like when you're, when you're around him, what, how is, what's his disposition? Like, um, usually face? jolly, jolly, usually very, very jolly. Well, you know, but I think it's sort of as you'd expect, to be honest, but that's them. Just two incredible, incredible people, supportive people who I constantly question, why did you have kids? You could have had such a good life <laughs> if you didn't have us. And they go, yes, but we uh-huh. love you. And we we, we've, oh, we wanted kids and we love you very much. And that was it, you know. <laughs> Even the format of your answer kind of tells you about you and your upbringing, maybe. Because yeah. when I ask someone, like, tell me about your parents, I imagine they should answer, not that they should, you can answer whatever you want. But I, I'd answer that, I said, I would answer not about their personalities, but like, what they do, <laughs> like oh okay. Well, um, yeah, tell me, tell. I would, well, no, I, I you, for example, I would like to know like what your dad, what is, what, what's your dad's profession? Oh, he's retired. He's retired now. Um, they used to both mom and dad used to do school trips, helping kids with learning difficulties to to like get to school. They sit in the back of the car with them and then like make sure they get to school okay and that kind of thing and that they're you'd like severe learning difficulties mum used to work with adults with learning difficulties dad used to work uh actually at our local county council he used to be an auditor so you go around to like a business <laughs> and check their books and that kind of thing okay um and uh but the other thing that they in the way they met and that they both loved to do was trampolining which you wouldn't trampolining. think you wouldn't <laughs> think to look at my parents because both my parents are well not both mum's actually quite small but um my my dad is quite a rotund man and like <laughs> he'll you you couldn't imagine it and he's also he's also disabled he's got um I, I, I just don't think about it because it's such a common thing but he's got a club foot so his one leg is shorter than the other and so he hobbles everywhere yeah because like that's, this, that's what I'm asking for I want to know about your dad's yeah. foot like I don't like you're telling me <laughs> you're telling me about his like his personality I'm like yeah that sounds like a, just a normal good person that's what like, I, yeah. I assume every good dad should be like <laughs> and, well He's got he's got one foot shorter than the other, and it's very round on the end. So it's like so when it was born, Damn. the foot was facing the other way, and so it had to be adjusted. As a result, we've got great free parking for so many years. Oh, that's but nice. um, it's, it's it's a good park. Um, well, but so I assumed I, that when you said he was disabled, it was something that happened after the trampolining. But no, apparently he was just trampolining when, with when, the when he was born, and yeah, he was trampolining with it, and it's. I've only seen it a few times and I've got videos of them in like the 80s and 70s like on trampolines bouncing around like OG videotapes <laughs> um, and I've got that footage on my computer but it is actually quite a sight to behold seeing my dad as as he is just kind of he doesn't do it anymore but like jumping on a trampoline and flipping in the air and doing backflips like Yoda it's actually it's kind of wild um, I, I was like in my mind I'm like were they flipping? But I'm like, I don't want to ask that because they probably weren't that good. They probably yeah, no, I don't want to offend them good. and make them seem uh, uh, boring. No, but they no, were, they're they actually were, flipping. <laughs> they met through trampoline clubs and stuff. Um, they're about ten years apart. Um, I think they sort of met as a as a trampoline uh, coach and student type situation. Your brother's um, your older brother. 
Yeah. So my brother is two years older than me. Okay, and then fine. dad is 60 going on 70 and mum's 50 going on 60. Oh, really? So, wow. um, yeah. So, so they, they and t- I want to know, I want to, huh? So they had him relatively late, I would assume? Yes. At least for yeah, their, yeah, their yeah, generation. Yeah. Yes, um, yeah, no, the, the, we were quite late um, to the party. I'm but, assuming they were like free spirits doing their thing before you guys were born. I think there was a, a, a fair bit of that. Um, I know that they dated sort of in their 20s and 30s, and then mum went off to college, and then they kind of broke up and didn't s- speak much, and then uh-huh. they, they just sort of happened to coincidentally rekindle many years later and sort of went oh well I think you're quite fun I think you're quite fun we're having a lot of fun here and you've got a nice face and I've got a nice face <laughs> let's uh, let's move in together and then quite shortly after shall we get married then okay and then shortly after that shall we have kids so that's yeah, how that's, I expect that's every the, British parents get married that's the backstory. I want to know about yours tell me about your family um, what's funny because like, again like I'm going to now talk about all these things that you apparently did not talk about, like, for example, because I'm assuming, for example, your your parents born and raised in England, right? Mm. You don't even... Do you not know? <laughs> uh, mom, I mean, mum was, but... Well, mum was So that naturally, but, I would, like, naturally, I would assume you would say that. That's what's... Yeah, uh, our, we, priorities we are, make, our priorities yeah. are so different, and it's well, so let's interesting. let's hear how you answer it, and then I'll talk about mine, and then we'll go back to you. Because we'll, then I feel like, wait, does that mean that what I'm going to answer, that's not what people want to hear in terms of their, like... I want to hear anything. I just want to hear anything at this point. Because I guess the fact that my parents are immigrants, like that is, uh, I guess that is a different perspective on yeah. life. You know what I'm saying? Um, and obviously the fact that I, where I live and how I live, but we'll talk about that in the future. Yeah, I would even start with my grandparents because it's like, I guess this is just, this is how I think about like in terms of upbringing it has to do. I also part of just the history of the family, I guess. For example, yeah. like my dad's parents are from Egypt my mom's parents are from Lebanon. They both kind of fled oppression. <laughs> they're they're both right. they're both Jewish families fled to Israel, and then my parents moved to America when they were early twenties. Um, not together, separate. Um, what's funny mm-hmm. is that my par- my parents are actually kind of related. <laughs> Don't Whoa. worry, not that close. <laughs> they're like third cousins, <laughs> twice removed. They share the same like great 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 uncle. I think at least oh, three greats. Wild. Uh, not, yeah, uncle. Grandfather, sorry, great, 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 great grandfather. They share, um, wow. who had like uh, just a ton of wives or something. I don't know, um, or kids. I, I like to think it's kids, not wives. <laughs> um, oh my goodness! But um, it's different time. Different times. Yeah, like I don't know, it's, it's, it's 1700s Lebanon. Um, so now, I guess they do kind of know each other because the family, their separate families, were kind of still in touch. Like these, like branch families of this clan I, it's like it's like this uh, like a Japanese clan with like branch families and like different like my parents did not know each other until they met each other in New York City um, uh, and then yeah just uh, like nothing they didn't have a crazy like dating life or anything they just dated each other and then got married um, like honestly like my parents in terms of compatibility it, it's literally just how good they are as people it's not like their interests or their disposition, or their uh, mm-hmm. up, uh, their education, or anything like that. It really is just that the fact that they're good people and that they l- like movies. I guess <laughs> they they both watch a lot of movies together. Like we have a a, a home theater because again, my dad is just a, a cinephile, and he watch you know he watches movies every you know every other day. Um, and my mom just joins him. I don't think she was like a fan of movies until she met my dad. But my mom has watched way more movies than me, even though I think. I care about like filmmaking more. Like she's mm-hmm. not a an artist or anything. She just she loves stories, I guess. And even then she's not like a huge like she watched for example all the MCU films with me. Um like sh- but it's not like she was obsessed with them. She just mm-hmm. her hobby is to watch movies whether or not she likes them or not. And she did. She did love the MCU films, but uh, it's not like she's obsessing over the characters or remembering remembering anything that happened in the previous movie. I have to always make it do a recap <laughs> of anything uh, anytime we watch a uh, Marvel movie. Um, and even then, like I'll I'll do a recap, and she'll be like, "No, that does not. I do not recall any of that. I'll just take your word for it." <laughs> <laughs> that definitely is part of who I am because my dad, for example, is a photographer. Uh-huh. He has his own uh, wedding uh, and event photography and videography studio you know this kind of profession lends himself to being very supportive of what i do like ever since i like and also even 
honestly, he's the reason my channel started because he's the one who yeah. technically gave me all the, my programs, all my equipment, all my, you know, everything that I had. And even when I was a kid, before I did the channel, like, for example, my ability to, you know, do digital art, that came from him. He's the one who bought me my first tablets, My gave me Photoshop, gave me... That's uh, great. Because um, he's a Photoshop professional, too. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I, honestly, I've surpassed him. Don't tell him that. Although I think he, he knows by now. <laughs> like, it's crazy because, like, my whole life, for like, since I was a child, like, my dad was the Photoshop guy. Anytime, you, you know, you want to retouch a photo or anytime you want to make some crazy kind of Photoshop monstrosity, he would do it. But he has, like, a completely different style of mine in terms of art. His is more, like, uh, intentionally tacky because in his profession, in, like, wedding photography and videography... Oh, people like tacky apparently people at least the parents who the parents who actually pay for the things not the child not the bride and groom the p- parents of the bride and groom they want tacky um and that's like w- what my dad i guess uh has learned to naturally do not because he loves that style and he's not good at what he does but more because that's that's what they want um while i do i have a more modern style when i'm doing photoshop or whatever um but it's just crazy when you're when your whole upbringing your dad is good at specific thing and then you become part of that profession and then you kind of surpass him it's it's really uncanny honestly that must be a rewarding experience though do you feel that like you're following in footsteps that kind of thing yeah exactly um and it's just it's just it is very fortunate it's just it's a good life when your dad supports you that in not only just supports you but actually is actively giving you the things that you need for your um for what you want to do in your life but yeah, notice how I did not talk about the personalities of my parents yet. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I, I want to know more about them. Like, what are they like? Um, what are they? What are they? You know, as people, um, they're just to me they're normal. You know, like they're that's they're what you should sure. be. You know, they're the example of what you sh- you should be and how you should act. Although, obviously, as you get you become an adult, you definitely start to notice your parents' flaws and all that. But we're not going to talk mm-hmm. about that or anything because that's not. They're not major or anything. They're just normal human flaws. Yeah. I have. I'm not. If if I talk about my parents' flaws, I would have to talk about my flaws too. Um, but I mean, yeah, my mother in like I, I say that the number one personality of my mother is the fact that she is a very good person. That's what shines mm-hmm. through, no matter what she. Although she denies it when she was a kid, she says when she was like a young adult, she said that she was very quiet and reserved. But right now, she's very. She's your mom. She's the one who's like doing the 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 embarrassing stuff at like stores and like uh and like being very not socially anxious. She's the one who's very socially capable and like and she's the one you call when you want her to make you appointments okay. for the for the doctor when you're younger or something. When, like that. when we come hang out, when I come to the New York, I wanna I wanna hang out and go on a shopping trip with you and your mom to Target. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, she'll be the one who's like confronting the cashiers. Obviously not being rude or anything, but she'll be the one like asking yeah, yeah. questions and stuff that I would never because I'm too em- embarrassed. Um, she's very energetic, although I don't, health complications have I'm nothing crazy or serious, but like she's definitely not as spry as she was when she was young or anything. But she, if she was like 20 years old right now, she would be the one like doing track and field. She was she was the she's very athletic right. and she was a tomboy as a kid. She was um, so she was doing a lot of sports. Although again, yeah, she really can't do that <laughs> nowadays. She'll get out of breath just by like cleaning the kitchen. Um, Although I guess I mean cleaning the kitchen is a, is a tough job. Honestly, we should, it's 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 a very underrated job. Um, but she actually works for my father. She's the manager of the studio. So, oh, she's, cool! So honestly, they work together. Yeah, exactly. And like, she, I would say she's a workaholic. Honestly, like she very much enjoys the job. And and even when she's back from home, she's only talking about the job and thinking about it for the next hour. Um, wow! <laughs> like and you know talking like immediately comes home talk to my dad about the, like some kind of business about what's going on with the studio. Like, Oh, this customer called, we have to do this or whatever. She, she won't relax until like two hours after she comes. And even then, see, that's so interesting. So that's where we, I, I think maybe differ in the, that I think, you know, it sounds like I can immediately see, Oh, well then that's where you get your ambition, your drive from. That's where you get your, your wanting to, to, you know, be in, in a, in a tech business as well and that kind of thing and i i don't i don't have that like for 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 sure my parents careers are nothing i've ever aspired to actually the idea of me doing either of my parents careers and the things that they've gone through sound like the worst fit for me 
that I could possibly imagine. I, I don't think I'd be good working with adults with special needs. I think I'd be really <laughs> terrible and Although like I'm dealing I, with I, me. I, I think you are. <laughs> nah, no, not at all. Like I, I think I'd be really bad at that job. And I, I certainly think as a um, like an auditor working with oh, yeah, that, people's yeah. books and sheets, that sounds miserable. And even doing like trampolining and stuff, it's just like anything sporty has always eluded me. And so that's just really interesting. But what I do love about my parents is I love the way that they entertain each other and that they oh, that's cool. they bring each other a lot of joy they bring each other a lot of like you know um they bring each other a lot of smiles like and that's that's, that's something good. that that is something i aspire to with obviously with phoebe is that like i just want this person to be my friend my buddy who i'm going through this life thing with you know exactly our, our idea of what how our relationship should be are always it's always stem from our yeah. parents or at least it's interesting you said like well my, you know my parents they're just they're not they're normal and it's it's true that i think for most people in this who are listening you, those are the first people that you're going to meet and it t- if <laughs> in your life and but if you think that there's a that they're not normal your parents it that they're not the sort of standard that's something that has to evolve over time because i think for a lot of people that is the default is it's just whatever Exactly. Exactly. Is, like, is, well, you know, through this job, I'm learning that it isn't. Like, my whole life, I thought that this is just how you know, people are naturally just good parents. Yeah. <laughs> and and then I've realized that that's not the case. Um, but for example, like my dad, I'm trying to think. Oh, okay, I didn't talk about his personality. Um, like. And I guess that's why I was hesitant to talk about the personality because I thought it would be boring. I thought that they just act like normal people. Um, but like, for example, my dad, he's, my dad's kind of the opposite of my dad. He's very in, in, intellectual. He's very, he likes to mm-hmm. learn and, and think and, and do things that are intellectual. For example, like he, since he was a kid, electrical engineer, that was, uh, I guess, the path of his life, electrical engineer. He even has a degree in it. But I guess he thought <laughs> he's also p- passionate about art and photography, I guess. And that became his, his job. He thought there was more money in that apparently. Um, but, um, and even then, like in his photography job, he's still like, doing a lot of engineering and electron, you know, dealing with electronics. Like he's definitely the tech savvy, savvy, like quote unquote old person. Um, mm-hmm. like when he's going to be like a grandfather, he's going to still understand how the TV works and all that mm-hmm. and, and the computer and all that. Although he's less, less, Computer how old, science. How old are your parents? My parents are both in their fifties. Uh, right. Four years apart. Sure. T- two years apart, actually. So that actually very. Wow. Four years. It took. F- f- my mom waited four years until she had me, the oldest. You know, the firstborn. Um. So they were just uh, doing their thing before. I guess my dad was also like. Uh, he started his studio during that time and like was working to have like mm-hmm. a stable income and also uh, buying a house before, or ha- at least enough money to buy a house before I was born. Um. But uh. Yeah, so it's um, but like my dad definitely very st- stubborn because he's always because most of the time he is the most intelligent person in the room and he knows what's best a lot of times. I mean, I don't know what's best, but he knows he just knows more. He knows what he's talking about, <laughs> and yeah. Obviously, in terms of like philosophy and uh, and uh, you know morality, he's just as you know fallible as everybody else. But like in terms of like just facts, I guess he knows more. Um, uh, but it's like fun. It's very fun to to have a dad who is passionate about learning as much as I am. I guess I probably got it from him, but I just, like, any, like, he's the, just like me, where, like, he knows every actor, and I guess I get I get that from my father. That's so great. That's so nice. And that's something, it's going to be something really nice to sh- be able to, to kind of share with your parents. And not in that I can't, and I, you know, I do share about YouTube and that stuff, but I know yeah. that it's not, it's not my parents' domain at, at all. That's you know, funny. it's, Super Cause, removed. Because my dad, he's the one, like, when I was 13, wanting me to become a YouTuber. <laughs> like, That's so cool. That was, That's like, so cool. he's like, oh, no, like, this was around the time of Fred. So he, like, oh, oh no, this is totally Whoa. possible for a kid to be, a, you know, a successful YouTuber. And when I was 13, I did. Start, that's when I start Trugin, started Trugin 7. And I made, like, these, like, animated, uh, like, these very limited animation uh, shorts about my mm-hmm. friends. Um and they would all watch it. It was a very fun time. But right. I only made like three in the course of like a few months. Um, and those were, I thought I was going to, you know, make it big doing those shorts. And I would, if they were actually good, you know, story time, it was basically like story time animation. Uh, and that's huge on YouTube. And I still have a passion for that. And I wish I could do that in some capacity, but that takes a lot of work and I can't just stop doing all my other videos. Um, sure. But uh, so I was doing that and my dad was very, you know, uh, 
excited about my career from the age of 13 already <laughs> before like s- s- five years before i even started true green seven seriously that's really cool we'll talk about in the next episode because it's even more important also our siblings and our just like day-to-day like like i guess traditions and stuff like that and the things that our family does in general not just the, their personality yeah, i was gonna ask about siblings but you want to save that for a future a future segment yeah i was gonna ask like i was gonna ask you too but like yeah no i think that would the next step like we just we did the the foundation yeah. of our family next we're gonna actually talk about our family all right so thank you guys for watching i this was this was probably one of my favorite in terms of the topics that we talked about I, yeah, it just seems like this is this is such a successful podcast in my mind. <laughs> I, hopefully, hopefully you guys think so as well. Well, you can find us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, but most importantly, and always the soonest here on YouTube. And if you are listening this far in to an episode of the Carmine Podcast, just know that specifically to you, to those people giving us those watch hours. Thank you. We really appreciate you. And seeing the comments over the first four and now five episodes and seeing the love and support on this, we're incredibly grateful. Just thank you. We're going to take this thing as far as we can go. So uh, stay tuned for more every single week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>